Hi everyone, this is uh, Dr. Ginger here back with you today to talk about a big pet peeve I have, pelvic girdle problems. Well, what is the pelvic girdle? Now, here it is. You'll see that it includes the sacroiliac joint, the low back. I even consider it, you know, to include a little bit higher up because you got to look at the joints above and below. Um, but the pelvic girdle proper includes the pelvic floor as well as the hip joint. Um, so just in review, again, SI joint, spine, the ilium, the pelvic floor, and the hip joint. So when I, as an orthopedic PT, so I grew up as an orthopedic PT, but then became a pelvic PT because you can't treat orthopedics in the pelvic girdle without being a pelvic PT. So you have to cross over. Um, one of the biggest problems that I see, and I'm gonna focus on one problem today, is that when people are treating hip arthroscopy, so post-op hip arthroscopy rehab, they're leaving out the pelvic floor. If you read hip arthroscopy protocols, there's nothing about the pelvic floor in them. It's not a part of what is being addressed. It's not being written about. It basically means we're leaving the pelvic floor out of orthopedics and sports medicine. I was pretty excited to see a recent article come up um, that mentioned that, that talked about that. Um, and I'm sorry, I will put it in the liner notes of the um, PT that um, wrote that paper. But I was very excited about that um, paper when it came out because it is bringing much needed attention that um, I've been attending to with my patients for quite a while. So where is the pelvic floor in orthopedics and sports medicine? And why is it important? First of all, when someone has a hip arthroscopy done, one of the main muscles um, of the hip is called the obturator internus, which you can see right here. Okay. Where is it? If you look at it, so if I flip this up from the pelvis, you can see the obturator here. Notice that through this little ATLA, which is a ligament, it attaches to the pelvic floor. Ding, 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 right? So if you have had a hip scope done and no one is attending to your pelvic floor, chances are you're not better yet. You still have probably the same feeling and symptoms that you did before the surgery. And defending the surgeon, it's not that your surgery failed or that you had a poor surgeon. Now that could be true, but in most cases, it's not, especially if you've gone to someone who only does hip scopes, and I can't emphasize the importance of that enough. They should only focus on hip preservation surgery, not hip replacements, not anything else, just hip scope. So that's my first recommendation. My second recommendation is um, if you are still having symptoms, hip impingement, so that groin pinching feeling, especially when you go from sit to stand or after you've been driving or sitting for a while and you stand up and you're like, whoa, that doesn't feel okay. Or if you're having this, I'm gonna put my pelvis right in front of my pelvis, this wrapping type of pain under the hip. If you're having that pain that kind of goes up into the sit bone and down into the adductors or inner thigh muscles, eh, it, it could be pelvic floor. So basically what that means is a person who specializes, like myself, in both um, the hip, post-op hip arthroscopy rehab and getting people all the way through, and also in the pelvic floor, is that we're going to screen for all of that and address it through your entire, <clears throat> excuse me, rehab. The problem, and I'm going to be a little bit honest here, the problem is in bigger hospital systems, they're usually looking to hire new grads. Rarely does someone stick around until they have the deep knowledge and experience to be able to treat these more complex issues. Um, so it doesn't mean that the newer PTs can't get you to a certain point post-op, but it does mean you need to search for someone, whoever that person is, with a depth of experience. They need to be, they need to specialize in both pelvic health 
and orthopedics and manual therapy. If it was my PT, I've actually been through a hip scope, so I have had to get colleagues to help me out with this. Um, I want my PT for hip scope rehab to be really skilled at pelvic floor dry needling all around the hip and all the way up. I want them to be skilled and trained in not just the dry needling, but manual therapy and joint mobs. They have to be able to do that, plus myofascial release. Dry needling, not just of the pelvic floor, but also of the scar around that area. I would prefer if they are actually trained in some kind of integrative care, because unless you're addressing lifestyle choices and stress management, things like that, sleep, um, you're not going to get all the way better. There can be dietary triggers, things that you eat that can signal for the body to go into an inflammatory state. And if it's an inflammatory state, is that hip going to feel better? No, it's not. So they need to be trained in some kind of functional integrative lifestyle medicine, the dry needling piece, the scar mobilization, visceral mobilization, pelvic health, in addition to orthopedics. So that's my beef on, and my two cents or whatever analogy you want to use, on why people don't get better at, after hip scopes. Because they're going to someone who isn't looking at the whole can of worms, proverbially speaking. So um, make sure you look for that. If you want to leave a comment and say, hey, where can I find people like that? I'll be happy to help direct you. I've been teaching continuing education on hip arthroscopy rehab for over well, almost 10 years now. And I have, do have a specialty continuing education course for PTs on that that will teach you to bridge pelvic health and orthopedics. That's so critical. So I am teaching other PTs how to do that. I address it in my own practice every single day. My practice is filled with people who are post hip scope and they come to me from all over the world. And that's, that's a privilege, um, not a bragging point for me to be able to say, I'm just thankful to be able to help people get out of pain. So no matter if you see me or not, I want to direct you to the best care possible. I hope this video has been helpful. If you want to get these videos like this and more, then subscribe on YouTube and give me a follow at Dr. Ginger Garner on Instagram, where I regularly post content like this. Um, the next chapter you should look at or playlist on YouTube is my hip hacks, and that'll give you lots of uh, nifty tips and tricks as well. Um, if you go to integrativelifestylemed.com, I have several public workshops. So that means public means open to everybody. Um, workshops on hip, on the snarky psoas, on do I have a labral tear, on how to manage that. And then if you're a pro, if you're a PT and watching this or you're an OT watching it and you really want to bridge the gap between pelvic and ortho when it comes to hip scopes, then I have a continuing education course for you also at integrativelifestylemed.com. Okay, that's all I've got. Thank you guys. See you next time.